So we're here with Frayne Zamor, who's a clinical social worker. And Frayne has a lot of experience with mindfulness and also um, has learned a lot about meditation. She's going to be running our meditation program at Fitness Generation. So Frayne, if you can talk a little bit um, about mindfulness and meditation, some of the benefits. Well, first of all, let's define mindfulness. Sure. Mindfulness is paying attention on purpose in the moment without judgment. John Kabat-Zinn came up with that definition, and I think it's perfect. Um, so the benefits are that we end up slowing down and um, can become more choiceful in our responses. So we're a little less reactive, and it helps us calm our whole nervous system so that people who are sort of inclined to depression tend to be a little less depressed people who are inclined toward anxiety, and right now in our society that covers just about everybody, tend to be a little less anxious. We know from studies that people with regular meditation practices have lowered their blood pressure, um, have been able to reduce insulin, those people who are um, diabetic, and Basically, all of our stress reactions get reduced. We also know that um, through regular practice, we're creating new brain synapses. So we're really enhancing our functioning on so many levels. It's just, you know, we could go on and on and on. There's been a lot of research in the last 15 to 20 years about the benefits of meditation. Great, thanks. Well, I'd like to also dispel a couple meditation myths. I've mm -hmm. had a lot of Clients and friends say, well, maybe meditation isn't for me um, for these reasons. And right. one of the myths that I've heard quite a bit is, myth number one is I can't sit still long right. enough to meditate. So what would you say to someone who says they can't sit still? So first of all, I would say, so don't. Um, there's walking meditation. There are all kinds of movement meditations. You know, Tai Chi, as an example, can be a movement meditation. Yoga depending upon how it's being practiced, can be a movement meditation. And walking outside in nature in particular, but even indoors, can be a movement meditation. There are other movement meditations that are really ancient, uh, that have to do with dancing and shaking and stuff like that. Um, so that's one of the, the big myths. The other thing about people who say they can't sit still is I would say work with it and, and try it and see what comes up for you. You know, the, the myth that I think is even um, kind of bigger mm -hmm. than that one is this whole notion of being able to empty my mind. Right. I don't know where that right. came from. I hear that all the time where I can't turn my brain off, I can't right. stop my thoughts. And you're not supposed to. Right. We are wired so that our brains are constantly working. Mm -hmm. That's part of what makes us human. Mm -hmm. So the, the goal of meditation isn't to have an empty brain or to shut it off or anything like that. It's to notice what's coming up. You know, that definition, mm -hmm. paying attention on purpose. So when you're sitting in meditation, as an example, and say your focus is your breath, and you notice that your mind has wandered, that moment when you have noticed, that's the perfect moment of mindfulness. And instead of beating yourself up, oh, my mind wandered, it's celebrate, oh, I noticed, good for me. And then without judgment, you come back to focusing on your breath. and then. A second later, you're going to have the same experience again. And that's what it's all about. It's really being able to kind of drop in and notice what's happening in your mind and in your body. So a heightened level of awareness. Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. Great. Um, another myth that I hear all the time is, especially with exercise or healthy habits, is that clients and friends may not have the time. Mm -hmm. So um, if you could help dispel that myth. How well, much time do you need, or what would be an efficient amount of time to meditate? You know, oh, okay, we should get 20 minutes of aerobics, we should get 20 minutes of meditation, we should get, you know, whatever. Everything is enhanced with X number of minutes of doing it. Moments of mindfulness throughout the day mm -hmm. are wonderful. 
And that's a great way to begin. So when you're standing on line at the supermarket, you can be standing in line really mindfully and focusing on your breath and noticing what's going on for you. And when you get up to the cashier, you're engaged with the cashier and that's that. You can have moments of mindfulness when you're stopped at a red light. You don't have to have your eyes closed when you're meditating. Mm -hmm. You don't have to be doing anything in particular with your body when you're meditating. So you can be meditating for brief moments throughout the day, and that's helpful. Most efficient, you want to do a regular practice of sitting and, and really focusing, and it's called practice because the idea is to practice it when you're being really specific about it so that you can bring it into your daily life. So that when I'm in conversation with you, I can simultaneously be checking in on what's happening with me so that when you say something that ruffles my feathers, I don't get reactive. Right. I can be, oh, no, my, no, my stomach is just clenching a little bit and I really want to lash out, but oh, I think I'll take a breath. Describe what the classes are going to look like at Fitness Generation. We're planning on doing 30-minute classes in the middle of the day, perhaps maybe in the evening as well. So. so what I'm anticipating is that when we get started, people will come in, will sit down. Um, we can sit in chairs like this. Mm -hmm. If people have a meditation practice, um, and they're used to sitting on cushions on the floor, or if they're wanting to experiment with that, we'll use yoga blocks, and I have ways to do that. I do that um, frequently when I don't have my cushion available. And um, I'll give some instruction, and I will answer questions. And we will have a period of, in the beginning, guided meditation, where I'll be walking people kind of through it, we may experiment with some walking meditation or some movement, depending upon what the group wants to do. And as, um, as we develop a regular group of people who are coming weekly, we'll adjust what the teaching will look like and how much guidance there will be during the meditation as the assembled group seems, appro as it seems appropriate for the assembled group. And, um, my own personal experience is that people who are brand new to meditation mm -hmm. and people who have a 20-year practice can meditate in the same space with the same guidance because if you have your own practice, you can tune out mm -hmm. or tune in, depending upon how you want to phrase that, um, during the instruction period. And it's an opportunity to be meditating with other people, which is so, so beneficial. It's hard to develop a regular meditation practice on your own. And the energy field that gets created when you're meditating with others is very enriching and really, really helpful. So I'm looking forward to it. And I really want it to be absolutely interactive and very informal and, um, and I'm happy to answer questions. And when I get asked questions that I don't know the answer to, I'll find out and get back. Great. Well, Fran, thanks for your time. And we really appreciate talking to you today. And I hope you guys are getting excited about our meditation classes. And I look forward to seeing you.